you dare blink because bare knuckle fighting championship presents knuckle mania three even the biggest show of the year starts with the free view three fights featuring some of the area's top prospects and one half of the fighting dodson brothers thuggy bear eric dodson looking for his second straight win then we jump right into the main card with a fight that just might steal the show. Fan favorite Chevy Bridges takes on Kevin Crash Kroom, looking for his second straight win. In our feature bouts, we have a true blockbuster talent on display. Former Pro Bowl NFL standout, Greg Hardy, debuts against two-fight veteran Josh Watson. Then in his first time out, the magician made his debut opponent disappear in 40 seconds. Can John Dodson do it again? This time to former interim champ, Jared Grant. Well, they say styles make fights, and if that's the case, then this fight is the best on the card. A battle for New Mexico as two-time boxing world champ, Austin Trout meets MMA icon in Albuquerque's Diego, the Nightmare Sanchez. And the most intense matchup in BKFC history comes to a head in our championship main event. Light heavyweight champion and bare knuckle juggernaut, Lorenzo Hunt meets the interim champ, Mike DeMarine Richmond, in a battle of all battles to unify the titles. And the capacity crowd starting to file in to the Tingley Coliseum here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We are indeed in the Duke City for Knuckle Mania 3. When we were here last August, they made such an impression on us, the Albuquerque fans, the New Mexico faithful, that we had to bring the biggest spectacular and bare knuckle fighting right here to Albuquerque. So here we are, folks. What a night. It is going to be a jam-packed card. That being said, folks, you are in the free view. And once that free view is over, you got to get to the BKFC app. For $7.99, not only will you get the complete Knuckle Mania 3 card, you're also going to get it next week in New Orleans, our heavyweight championship main event on that one. You'll get a full feast of videos, including all of our past events, exclusive videos like our Deep Cut series, and our official BKFC podcast. Heck, you can buy some BKFC gear there. You can buy tickets there. It's all on the BKFC app. Now, before the fighters walk here, let's send it down to our commentary team, the legendary Sean Wheelock and Chris Lytle. Gentlemen, I am so jazzed up for this. I'm going to go to you first, Chris. This main event, about six months in the making, these two fighters have been spitting venom like no other two fighters I've ever seen. It's been pretty impressive. Very impressive. These two guys really genuinely don't like each other. A lot of people are making a big deal of the weight discrepancy, thinking one guy was fighting at 205, one guy's fought down at 135, meeting right here in the middle. Totally different right there. This is bare knuckle. It doesn't matter it's who hits the hardest, who's cleaner, more accurate, and lands that good shot first. So I think throw that out the window. Whoever is on their game plan is going to win this fight. Now, Sean, last August, the Dodson brothers, I think, did something that we've never seen before. Both guys lodging a knockout in their debut with the company. Incredible stuff. Do you think they can do it again tonight? They're both on the card. Cyrus, the Albuquerque crowd is certainly behind them. This city, of course, is home to a multitude of high-level fighters, and two of the most popular are the Dodson brothers. Younger brother Eric made his pro combat sports debut. BKFC 28, as you mentioned, here in New Mexico this past August, Cyrus, a first-round knockout win versus Nick Villar for Eric Dodson coming in 23 seconds. Older brother John Dodson told Chris Lydell and me the night was extremely meaningful to both himself, his brother Eric, the entire Dodson family, and marked the first time the two brothers had fought on the same card. We move then forward to the evening's co-main event. John Dodson, who came to BKFC following a great run in the UFC, twice fought Demetrius Johnson for the flyweight title, faced fellow UFC veteran Ryan Benoit as his younger brother before him in the evening. A first round finish for John Dodson, 40 seconds to record the TKO. Again, that was the first time the Dodson brothers had fought on the same card. They repeat that again tonight here at BKFC Knuckle Mania 3, downtown Albuquerque, New Mexico. A full house in attendance. And again, there will be massive support, Cyrus, for the Dachshund brothers.
All right, Chris Lattle, right back to you. Now is your time to shine because <laughs> the odds are out. And if somebody wants to lay a little bit of cheddar on the fights here for Knuckle Mania 3, what's really sticking out to you? A lot of good fights right here. So many good fights to bet on. Hard to pick this one, but right now I'm thinking Tonga, Gaston right there, minus 400. So much experience going against a newer fighter. You've got to like that fight. Well, if you do want to make things interesting, then DraftKings Sportsbook definitely has your hook up tonight. I'm going to hit you with it right now. You can earn a $50 bonus bet on tonight's card with your first deposit of $5 or more on DraftKings Sportsbook. Scan the QR code, enter the code BKFC Mania to play now. Now, before the fighters walk, let's take a look at the official rules for Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. All fights scheduled for five two-minute rounds. The fights are scored by three judges on the 10-point must system. Hand wraps must be at least one inch below the bare knuckles. Punching in the clinch is allowed. No three knockdown rule. No being saved by the bell in any round. No kicks, knees, elbows, takedowns, or submissions. And with that being said, it's knuckle up time. Let's get to our first Crescent Tools Tale of the Tape. We open in the bantamweight division. Anthony Sanchez versus Derek Perez. And you can see here, Sean Perez has a four inch height advantage, a two inch reach advantage. Sometimes I think that height advantage is not an advantage. Hard to duck under those punches, but that two inch reach advantage, he's gonna wanna make Anthony Sanchez pay every time he tries to step close. This is the BKFC debut for Derek Perez. He's had one bare knuckle bout, one bare knuckle MMA bout, 13 in pro MMA, 26 in pro boxing. One of those 13 pro mixed martial arts bouts coming against his opponent in this fight, Anthony Sanchez. In pro MMA, they fought April of last year, Derek Perez defeating Anthony Sanchez by second round TKO. Perez said, as Sanchez did when we fought in MMA last April, I'm expecting a fast start from Sanchez. I think he's going to swing big. I have to be ready. I have to stay behind my jab. Well, Sean, Perez feels like this is a sport for him. Talked about that jab. Wants to utilize a lot of in and out motion right there. This is interesting. These fighters really dislike each other. You talked about that fight in the past. A lot of bad blood since that fight. Perez said of Sanchez, he's really just a brawler. He will break mentally and he will break physically once I hit him hard. Says he wants to stay on clinch when he has to. Says when he's in the clinch, wants to use that uppercut to the body, throw to the head. This is going to be a great one because, Sean, we like many, or we like, you know, adversity. We like people who have anger towards each other. This is definitely that fight. This is the BKFC debut for Anthony Sanchez. He's 1-0 overall in this sport of bare knuckle. He's had two pro boxing bouts, two in pro MMA, including the aforementioned loss versus Derek Perez April of last year. Of that loss, Sanchez said, I was getting the better of Perez with my hands. He caught me with a head kick. He finished me on the ground with ground and pound. This is a different sport. This will be a different result. Bare knuckle favors my skill set. I'm aggressive. I don't move backwards. I'm going to take this fight to the pocket. And once in the pocket, I will remain in the pocket. So he understands how he has to get in. Use that in and out motion to get in there. Utilize feints, what you talked about. Get into that pocket. Land, no clinch, uppercut to the body, and then exit. Anthony Sanchez said after the victory, Derek Perez was extremely disrespectful. He yelled at my family. This is redemption for me, not just on the loss, but because I don't like Derek Perez, I'm going to make a statement with a win in BKFC. To get Knuckle Mania 3 started, we send it into the ring with the always outstanding Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the Tingley Coliseum here in Albuquerque, New Mexico.
Mexico. And ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the biggest bare knuckle extravaganza of all time. Welcome to Knuckle Mania 3. Knuckle Mania for review begins with five two minute rounds in the bantamweight division presented to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears black and silver. He stands five feet, 10 inches tall. His official weight, 135.4 pounds. He holds a combined combat sports record of 41 fights and tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Belen, New Mexico. Here is Derek Rage Perez. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears red and black trimmed in silver. He stands five feet, six inches tall. His official weight, 135.2 pounds. He holds an undefeated bare knuckle fighting record at 1-0 and makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Midland, Texas, here is Anthony Little Nidus Sanchez. And our referee in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn. As the Dotson brothers are fighting on this card, so too are the Perez brothers. In bout number three, you will see right, Derek's Jimmy, older brother, Gene Perez, Back a bit. versus Back a Derek bit. Dotson. Back a Back bit. in the featherweight division. Right, here we go. This in the bantamweight division. Both Look fighters up. up to scratch, three feet apart. Round number one. Oh. Sheer trying to hang up the scratch line. Rapid fire start from Anthony Sanchez. Sanchez with a huge right hand right off the bat right there. Landed flush. I'm surprised. Perez didn't go down from that. Looking to turn off the rope, taking another right hand is Derek Perez. He's in the black and silver trunks. Phenomenal start from Anthony Sanchez. Big left hand and a right hand. Closing the distance in the pocket exactly where Sanchez told us he wants to be. And Perez is eating so of these shots. He needs a clinch right now. He's going to get hurt if he doesn't. Stepping forward off the ropes, Derek Perez. Now the turn. Sanchez with his back against the ropes. Counter on the right hand. Right hand right back from Derek Perez. And these guys have thrown nothing but punches for the first minute. They gotta be careful they don't wear themselves out, Sean. Sanchez was playing all offense, now playing a lot of defense, trying to go back to offense. And Sean, you gotta you have to think that it might be that animosity that's making these guys fight like this, because these guys are going all at it right now. 45 seconds remaining in a ferocious round number one. On the overhand right. Overhand right, Chris is there for Anthony Sanchez thus far in this fight. He's definitely found a home for it. That's why I talked about that taller person. Sometimes it's not an advantage, it's a disadvantage. Perez trying to stay on the outside. Step in with the naked right hand from Sanchez. That was not there. It's high and tight now for Perez, trying to slow down this tempo. And you'd like to see Perez throwing that jab out there, making his opponent pay every time he stepped forward. He's got the reach, he's got to utilize it, Sean. Right to the body, counter right hook, right back from Perez. Into the clinch, short right hand from Anthony oh. Sanchez on the left hand. Sanchez landing to the head. Half-time plum initiated by Derek Perez. There's the bell. That's the end of a phenomenal round number one. And so you can see that Perez got hit again. He keeps that chin a little bit too high. He's got to tuck that in. He's getting hit every time with that. Fuck yeah, baby. He's getting tired and he's breaking already. What I want you to do is I want you to stay on it. And here's the first part of that first round. Those guys just went at it. Kane stool. Kick those feet up. Hey, you got this, Kane. Look at both guys landing big punches in that round, Sean. You look good in there. He's just as tired, if not more tired, okay? We're gonna keep pushing. This is your shit. This is where we wanna be, okay? I want you to just do more movement. Keep stepping to the right, shooting with the left. Okay, remember, two minute rounds. Just breathe and control the pace. Just heard this seconds out whistle. Referee Andrew Glenn calling both fighters up to scratch to start round number two. Anthony Sanchez versus Derek Perez. Both fighters making their BKFC debut. And thus far, doing so with authority. Round number two. 
And this is where you see this fight really start, Sean. They're going to settle in. They can't go at that pace, so they're going to have to really be more technical from here on out. Stepping with the right hand and the left hand. That was a clever 2-1. Sanchez now resetting, coming in with the right hook, left hook. There is standing tall after the short left and the right hand from Derek Perez. Forward pressure now from Perez. Oh, jam from Sanchez, not there. Swelling under the left eye of Derek Perez as he takes that left hand to the chin from Anthony Sanchez. And look at that, 120 punches thrown for Perez right there. Phenomenal pace and, and percentage for both guys right now. Unbelievable first round. Sanchez continuing to throw that right hand at him with the right hand and the left hook. A two-three combination. And it remaining round number two. Sanchez by turning his opponent around right there. He was in some trouble. Right hand, left hand again. Phenomenal fight. Time call by referee Andrew Glenn. Mouthpiece out. Yeah. Mouthpiece right back in. Tommy, it's the, the second time we've seen Perez get his mouthpiece like that. He needs to close that jaw tight, bite down on that mouthpiece. If he has that knocked out, he can get his jaw broken, Sean. Slight swelling under the right eye of Anthony Sanchez. Perez, the southpaw stands, trying to stay low, off the jab. So you can really see whoever steps outside that lead foot is usually the one laying that punch. To put Sanchez, it's that overhand right, it's Perez, it's that straight jab. Stepping with the naked right hand on the counter, and that's the first knockdown of this fight. Sanchez took himself off balance with the naked right hand that got caught in the turn with the left. John, that wasn't the cleanest punch right there. I did do the most damage, as I say, but it caught him at the right time and knocked him out bounce. Clean knockdown. Final seconds, round number two. Looking for a second knockdown in this round is Derek Perez. He won't find it. We move to round three. Take another look at this knockdown. Watch how Sanchez steps forward. Just got caught off balance. It wasn't, like I said, it wasn't the most devastating punch that he's landed this round or in the fight, but he just caught him in the wrong position. Footwork is everything. If your feet aren't underneath you, you get hit, you're probably gonna go down, Sean. It was an incredibly short left hand, and as you and I know, Chris, short punches very often are effective punches in there. Because they're not seen. When you see a fight, uh, when you see a punch right coming, it's easier to react to. If not, those are the ones that hurt. I mean, Sean, we knew Knuckle Mania 3 was going to be great, but starting off the first fight go. like this, you got to like it. Toe the line, gentlemen, toe the line. Let's go, seconds out. Phenomenal start Round to Knuckle three, Mania 3. Phenomenal first two rounds. Presumably a 10 8 for Derek Knuckle Perez. The three judges scoring ringside, signed by the outstanding New Mexico Athletic Commission. Sanchez was able to find a home for that overhand right early. I think he needs to try and get back that. Step outside that lead foot, come in with that overhand right, follow up with the hook. There is staying on the outside, and our fighter meeting, Sanchez said, that is not what I can allow Derek Perez to do. Stay long. I have to fight in the pocket. Sanchez has did a good job of doing just what I said, came back with that overhand right a couple times. The seconds got around number three. Staying long as Perez. The southpaw stands off of that long jab. Good stepping. There's the left hand. It's that 2 1, and it's landing and working from Sanchez. See, he tries to throw that overhand. If he's too short, come back with the left hand, and then he's even followed up with another two. Overhand right. Whatever he can. So two ones and two threes. Landing. There's a good left hand and a counter right hand right back from Anthony Sanchez. Walk forward pressure now from Perez. Perez with the left hand. So I'm really impressed with both these guys, Chin. They're taking massive shots. Slow forward pressure. Harris cutting the angle. Left up with that nearly lands. Sanchez resetting. A lot of times Sanchez's overhead right is just a few inches short. He's got to step in a little bit more with that. Jab again from Perez, 5'10 to Sanchez is 5'6. He's six inches taller and he has a very tall stance of this year. Sanchez is 
doing a great job right now, but I'd like to say, what if you didn't step outside that foot? But what creates a better angle? You can't get the ball. Stuff out the corner, pivot out the corner, wait, pivot, throw that right. All right, pivot, we need to pivot, bro. Pivot, and here was that good overhand by Perez or Sanchez and follows up with two, three punches. If that overhand doesn't land, he keeps coming forward exactly what he needs to do. And here's one of those fantastic exchanges where both guys throwing and landing. It's like mainly Perez on this exchange right here. Seconds out. Seconds out. Here we go. Round number four. All right, gentlemen, round four. Let's tell the line. Swelling above Come Anthony on. Sanchez's left brow. Sanchez takes the slide step backwards off the scratch line to start the fourth round. Beating forward pressure from Derek Perez. So I think Sanchez right now is definitely staying in the range of Perez. He needs to get inside a little bit more step as he throws those punches and stay close to where he can land his hard shots. He's ended up just an inch or two short each time. So just the long straight punches, trying to keep Perez on the outside. Perez staying on the outside to the body. That was slipped down the uppercut. Great shot for Sanchez is back against the rope. Sanchez trying to fire back with the right hand. I mean, Big shots on the inside. The left hand getting through from Anthony Sanchez. Perez's chin is wide up in the air. He's wide open sometimes. He's got to tuck that in. Perez walking through with those shots. Right hand. Top. Face stop, wash. Stop, and that stop, draws stop, the break from Andrew Glenn. I mean, Perez is just showing some phenomenal cardio and conditioning right there. Look at all these Tied shots for Perez. Out. 222 thrown. Both guys are at a very high rate right now. Now peace out right back here in the mouth of Derek Perez. Resetting from range. There's the long jab again from Southpaw stands. 50 seconds remaining round four. Stepping with the left hand, right hook misses. Straight punches again. Now in the pocket comes Derek Perez from the half tie ball. Left uppercut from Perez. Sanchez has slowed down visibly here in round number four. It was a great job by Perez. He made it because he stepped on the outside, got with that punch. Sanchez throwing the right cross, but then the flurry right back from Perez after Sanchez landed his most significant punch of this fourth round. Closing seconds now of round number four. This continues to be outstanding. Anthony Sanchez, Derek Perez. Into the clinch, half tie plunge snatched again by Perez. Sanchez with his back against the ropes. To the body with the left hand. Perez with the uppercut. Right hook. We move to the fifth and final round. And so I think that's the fourth time we've seen the mouthpiece of Perez come out. I don't know if they're going to call like a penalty to that eventually, but. <laughs> Jeez, look at those shots being landed by Perez. Sanchez coming back with a little flurry at the end. That one that was wasn't all a moment. <laughs> Perez right there. Oh, never mind. I take it back. Look at that hard right hand landed by Sanchez. I think that was the one that knocked the mouthpiece out of Perez. But I think that's the fourth time that's happened. So you're thinking about the three New Mexico judges scorecards heading into the fifth and final round. Think back to round number two. Perez with that very short, sharp left hand. Dropping Anthony Sanchez, presumably a 10 8 round, Chris. But well, not only that, but he seems like at most of these exchanges, it's in and up with Sanchez is back against the ropes and Perez throwing punches. They're both throwing punches, they're both landing, but a lot of times, if you're pushing the guy back, which you're winning the fight. Keep it in. Keep it in. Left hand knockdown. Perez of Sanchez, the only knockdown thus far in this fight. Last round, gentlemen. We're now in the fifth and final round. Backward steps off the scratch line from Anthony Sanchez. Who had an absolutely brilliant start to this fight. Credit to Derek Perez recovering that long slot in 20 seconds, settling in, getting the knockdown around number two. 
Forward pressure around number five, but absolutely nothing decided yet between these two fighters. Long jab again, Derek Harris. Sanchez has really got to push off that back foot and get inside or come with some head movement. Duck underneath that jab and do something to land that big right hand. He's got to do something meaningful in this round, Sean. Straight jab, range finder jab now from Derek Paris from the outside. The right hand getting through the left hand. Good duck under on the right hook from Sanchez. Tight form against there. It's by Derek Paris. Lots of fingers, the left hand. Perez is doing a great job of this staying right in Sanchez's face, not giving him the time to break and break. catch his wind. He just stays right clean. in his face the entire time. Walks step him back. down, stalks him. Back Back active clinch. Good break from referee Andrew Glenn, keeping this fight flowing. 50 seconds remaining, fifth and final round. It's the jab again. See that range finder jab. Harris just trying to keep Sanchez on the outside. In this fight, as he told us he would, Sanchez has done his best work in the pocket. But in round four, again here in round number five, Chris, Sanchez has largely been stuck on the outside. And it's been on the inside. Perez has largely been snatching that half tie corner, throwing uppercuts. Just the more active fighter right now. You can see from the numbers, landing a lot more, throwing more. It's the right hand on the entry from Sanchez, then the backward step. Single-mindedly coming forward as Perez walking through that left hand, right hand. Third counter right hand from Anthony Sanchez off the ropes. Left uppercut, another left uppercut from Derek Perez. The bell, that is the end of a phenomenal fight. Full credit to Anthony Sanchez and Derek Perez, both in this, their BKFC debut. And so those two guys went at it. You don't see too many fights start off like that and just keep going the entire time. I heard, Chris, I heard. as we talked about before the start of the fight, these two faced each other in pro MMA April of last year. Perez defeating Sanchez by second round TKO. This a phenomenal full five rounds. I'd like to see these two at everything. <laughs> Lentway, Penjack Salai, submission grappling. Let's keep it coming. And here's the final numbers you can see. Look at that, 345, 69% landing rate. And that being said, Sanchez, you know, threw a lot of punches as well, 226. I mean, unbelievable numbers for these guys. These guys were very active. What a fight. And Sean, I would like to see that head kick that put Sanchez down, because he ate a lot of punches right there and just kept going. So that had to be one great head kick. Again. So the three New Mexico judges are having their scorecards tallied now at the New Mexico Athletic Commission table. Think back to round number two, the lone knockdown of this fight. Sanchez stepping in with the naked right hand, taking himself off balance. The right hand of Perez, then that short, almost stubbing left hand, dropping Anthony Sanchez. Again, we say presumably a 10-8, not guaranteed. <laughs> But to be honest with you, look at the face right there of Sanchez. I mean, he ate a lot of punches, but he, he's not cut open bad. He, he looks pretty good for, for all things considered right there for what he just went through. All right, guys, let's go. Let's Two and no suspects. We send it to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go to the decision, Let's have a round of applause for these two warriors for an amazing beginning to Knuckle Mania 3. After completing the scheduled five rounds, here are the score totals from our judges at ringside. Mark Sanchez, 49-45. Judge Tellez, 49-45. And Judge Romero, 50-44. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decision, Derek Rage Perez. Sean, very impressed with Derek Perez's performance, not only with his endurance, his cardio, but just his ability to take a punch. Looked phenomenal in all aspects. Anthony Sanchez certainly had his moments offensively. A phenomenal start to this fight with the right hand and a ferocious opening 20 seconds. But the three judges have it 4-1, 4-1-5-0, and the one point at 10-8 in favor of Perez for the knockdown in round number two with that short left hand. A phenomenal start to Knuckle Mania 3.
The winner by way of unanimous decision, Derek Perez defeats Anthony Sanchez. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Watch every live Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship pay-per-view event for $7.99 a month. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live Bare Knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. Tonight only, you'll receive a free gift with any purchase of $25 or more at BareKnuckleShop.com. Check out the huge selection of merch to choose from with sizes and styles for everyone. You can place your order now at BareKnuckleShop.com. And again, a reminder, if you spend $25 or more, you'll receive a free gift. So knuckle up at BareKnuckleShop.com. Bare Knuckle Fighting's granddaddy of them all has taken over the great state of New Mexico, and the fans are already in a frenzy. Knuckle Mania 3 is presented by Nerd Focus Energy Drink, OnlyFans, and Crescent Tools. And now, let's go to your next Crescent Tools. Tell the tape. In the featherweight division, Nick Gonzalez versus Cito Navarro. You can see Sean. A four inch height advantage for Navarro, a three inch reach advantage. Looked very comfortable in his first fight. He's going to utilize that range. He knows that Gonzalez wants to get inside and so hard punches, so it's up to Cito to make him pay each time he does. Navarro enters 1-0 in BKFC. That win came in his Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship debut March of last year. He defeated Anthony Prater by way of first round TKO. Navarro has also had 12 amateur boxing bouts. In our fighter meeting, Cito Navarro told us he wants to continually fight on his toes. He said, I want to use angles, I want to use pivots, and constantly throw counters. Really feels like he needs to stay at this end counter throw a lot of body shots, but he said a lot of very intelligent things in there, Sean. He wants to throw to the head, make his opponent cover, and then start working the body. Don't just come straight up the body. When he's covering up, it's very difficult to get countered. So he shows his, his maturing and his development in this sport. Of Navarro's opponent, Nick Gonzalez, in this 145-pound bout, Cito Navarro said, I think Gonzalez is going to swing wildly for the knockout. I think he's going to jump in with his power punches. I cannot let him settle in and get comfortable in that rhythm of just winging knockout punches. Well, to make that a long story short, he says he cannot brawl with this guy. Be more technical. He's a better boxer. He's a better fighter. He just cannot brawl with this opponent. This is the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship debut for Nick Gonzalez. He's a veteran of six pro MMA bouts, including one in Bellator and four pro boxing bouts. Gonzalez told us he prides himself on being his word, gritty and durable. Gonzalez also said, I absolutely do not want to go all five rounds. I will take risks to get the finish. He said, no risk, no reward. And he loved the fact that they're starting three feet away, so he said he might as well get a fast start. He's in the place where he needs to get, so he might as well jump right away. So you can expect him to come straight forward right away and throw hard punches. Of Cito Navarro, Nick Gonzalez said, he's good moving forward, so I have to make him move backwards. I think Navarro's going to try to outbox me. I think he's going to try to stay long. I want to work in the mid-range, work in the pocket, quickly seize openings, make this a very rough and rugged fight. Don't let this just turn into a boxing bout without gloves. Well, he wants to land a good punch quick. He said he doesn't feel like his opponent has ever been hit hard in the face with the bare knuckle, and he wants to see how he reacts when he does. Back we go to Jeff Houston. Fight fans of Albuquerque. 
We are set for the next fight of the night, scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the featherweight division, presented to you by Knockout Gummies. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, tonight he wears black and gold. He stands five feet ten inches tall, his official weight, 142.8 pounds. He holds an undefeated bare-knuckle fighting record at 1-0, fighting out of Worcester, Massachusetts, by way of Carolina, Puerto Rico, here is Slick Cito Navarro. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black. He stands five feet, six inches tall. His official weight, 144.2 pounds. He holds an MMA record of three victories opposite three defeats. And tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Here is St. Nick Gonzalez. And our referee in charge of the action, Dave Rios. So often in fighter meetings, fighters say, I want to throw to my opponent's body to open up the head. Cito Navarro said, I want to throw to Nick Gonzalez's head to open up his body. Round number one. Black trucks for Nick Gonzalez. Black trucks for Cito Navarro. Gonzalez doing just what he said, coming out and throwing hard punches right away. Short right hook to the body from Navarro, staying on the outside exactly where he wants to be. Gonzalez trying to close distance. Two left hand, and that drops Cito Navarro. Landed right on the body. Navarro is hurt. He's got to do a good job right now of covering up. Navarro taking the mandatory hand count from referee Dave Rios. Right back to it. Gonzalez racing no time into the pocket. Knockdown number two. Navarro was badly hurt right now, Sean. Oh, this wow. fight is over. And a win with emphasis in his Bare Fighting Championship debut for Nick Gonzalez. And that was just the opening exchange right there. Gonzalez landed a hard left hand. That was all she wrote. That's all it takes in this sport. See from the replay right here, just a nice left hand. Oh, right on the button right there. It's all it takes. You can tell Navarro never really recovered from that first one. Couple straight right down the middle, landed. That's all it takes. Dr. Don Muzi is our chief medical officer for Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. He is the immediate past president of the Association of Breakside Physicians. He is tending to Cito Navarro. And you've got to feel bad for Navarro. Had such a great debut. He's been waiting to come back for a long time. So excited to be here. All over very quickly, Sean. That's all it takes in this sport, though. Chris, go back to our fighter meeting with Nick Gonzalez. He said very clear-eyed. This is his quote. No risk, no reward. He took some risks, and now all reward for Nick Gonzalez. Solving the distance, walking through the punches of Cino Navarro, a very talented 21-year-old fighter. Landing the left hand, getting the knockdown. Navarro, to his credit, back at eight, taking the count from Dave Rios. Gonzalez literally sprinting into the pocket and then getting the finish. Well, you could tell. Navarro was not on steady legs right there. That's why I said he need to grab his opponent, do something, get on his bike and run. But it's hard to do when your legs are underneath you. Your brain saying do this. It's not happening. It's not working right for you. So that's what happened right there. You got to feel bad for him, but you got to be happy for Gonzalez. Look how happy Gonzalez is right now. Coming in, did what he said. He wanted to come out right away, throw hard punches, land a good shot. He didn't know how his opponent would react. He found out, Sean. This is the home city of Nick Gonzalez, Albuquerque, New Mexico. You heard the pop from this Albuquerque crowd. And Sean, what a, what a great crowd right here. They understand fighting. They support their fighters. They support their own. There's so many good fighters out of this area. And when they do great things, the crowd reacts, and you just heard it today. You're with us live worldwide online for our BKFC Knuckle Mania 3 preview. At the top of the hour, our main card begins. The way to watch is on the BKFC app. We go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge of the action, Dave Rio steps in and calls a stop to this fight at 41 seconds into round number one. For your winner, by KO Saint Nick Gonzalez.
phenomenal debut for Gonzalez. Came out there, did what he wanted to, landed hard punches, got the KO quickly. Nick Gonzalez had a strategy. He said, I'm going to step forward, take chances, throw to execute, make this, again, his words, a gritty and durable type fight and type performance. Check and check all the way around. Two knockdowns to the finish for Nick Gonzalez. The winner by way of first round KO, Nick Gonzalez defeats Cito Navarro. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Watch every live Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship pay-per-view event for $7.99 a month. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live Bare Knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month. Tonight only, you'll receive a free gift with any purchase of $25 or more at BareKnuckleShop.com. Check out the huge selection of merch to choose from with sizes and styles for everyone. You can place your order now at BareKnuckleShop.com. And again, a reminder, if you spend $25 or more, you'll receive a free gift. So knuckle up at BareKnuckleShop.com. to knuckle mania three folks i mean could you predict what we got in that very first fight with derek perez i mean what an incredible matchup and that is just how we got things started a five round war to the distance nobody saw it coming and we're going to see his brother gene perez coming up next taking on dotson and uh let's uh take a look right now because austin trout just made his way in. It's our OnlyFans exclusive look as two time boxing world champion Austin Trout makes his way into the arena. He'll be taking on the living legend Diego Sanchez from right here in Albuquerque in a true battle of New Mexico. Trout and Sanchez in our co main event tonight. A lot of folks tuning in just for that now we know both these guys have excelled in their respective sports leading up to their debut in bare knuckle and that means a lot of incredible opponents throughout the years cyrus this is the sixth major organization boxing world champion to come to bkfc austin trout the previous five chris well there have been mixed results Austin Trout, though, said, I am different from the previous five and that I have really embraced this sport. He also said, I know what it's like to be on a big stage. You see the notable opponents, Chris. Overall, 10 major organization boxing world title fights in his career for Austin Trout. I mean, Cotto, Alvarez, uh, just unbelievable talent that this guy's fought. Nothing but great opponents out there, Sean. 100% and of course Diego Sanchez. I mean, what hasn't this guy done in MMA? You can't say world champion, but maybe an uncrowned champion at times and probably the most heart of any fighter that we've ever seen step into an octagon, a cage, a ring, etc. When you look at Diego Sanchez, this guy, like I said, a living legend. People love to get behind this guy, especially here in Albuquerque, Sean. His notable opponents, we're going to give you eight. I think we could have given you 28. <laughs> yeah. The names are phenomenal. Diego Sanchez, of course, coming to prominence. Season one of The Ultimate Fighter. 
That was 2005. He was a prodigy, and he has emerged as a full MMA superstar. Chris, the BKFC debut tonight for Diego Sanchez. Well, I know we talked about his heart earlier, but it's not just his heart. It's his drive. It's his determination. It's his grit. I mean, this guy is one of the dirtiest, grittiest guys out there, and I mean that as a complimentary way. He will get in there and do whatever it takes to win. He's a savage out there. And then when you're talking about world champs that have made their way into BKFC, you know, Sean, we've talked about this before. They haven't fared very well, but like you said, it seems like Austin Trout really embracing this sport. This may be, not even be a one-off for him. He may be here a number of times. He really wants to make his home here at BKFC. Well, when Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship launched, I really thought this would be the halfway line between MMA and boxing. It has not been that. I would say this has been about 95-5 in favor of MMA. Austin Trout said, I'm going to change that. Trout said, there are a lot of boxers on my level, current and former world champions, who are eyeing Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. They're waiting to see how I do. I asked Austin Trout in our fighter meeting, do you feel you're representing boxing? He said, absolutely. Trout, without naming names, said other high-level boxers have come in. They have thought that this sport was boxing without gloves. He said, I understand the name of this sport is bare knuckle fighting. There are elements of the clinch. There are elements of wrestling. There are elements of dirty boxing. And that just shows his high level of understanding, high fight IQ. He's understanding how he has to change, has, how he has to adapt. And he said he's worked on the clinch, worked on all aspects of this. He is wanting to do this. And that's what you got to love. Some people are willing to go back. You're the champ of the world this time. And now you're ready to humble yourself and go back down and learn a new sport. That's what he's done. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. And of course, folks, if you want to see that co-main event, you need to get on the BKFC app and get that for $7.99 right about now. With that being said, let's get our first Dodson brother inside of the squared circle with our next matchup and the Crescent Tools, tail of the tape. We stay at 145 pounds for Eric Dodson versus Gene Perez. And Sean, the thing that jumps out the page at you right now is that six-inch reach advantage for Eric Dodson. When he's going to want to utilize that, he's so fast, explosive. Stay on the outside where he can land punches, and Gene Perez cannot. We've already seen when Perez can take a punch. We're going to find out if Gene can as well. This is the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship debut for Gene Perez. He's had one bout in the sport of Bare Knuckle, 24 in pro MMA, 21 in pro boxing. Perez said that my game is built around constant movement, constant head movement. He said I've evolved over my career from being just a straight crawler to now what I consider to be a smart fighter. I'm going to throw a lot of counters off of all of that. Like you said, Sean talked about being a smart fighter, countering, parrying punches, using head movement. That's the sign of an intelligent fighter. He's had so much experience, and that's what you gain when you have a lot of fights. Gene Perez said of Eric Dodson, I know he's athletic and fast. I feel he lacks punching power. He said, I'm going to parry his punches. I'm going to meet his aggression with a higher level of aggression. I'm going to utilize his word, smooth boxing throughout this fight. Once to utilize that pressure, push the pace. He feels like he can outclass his opponent later on the round. So make it go a little bit of distance. Use the punches to the body to open up the head. Gene Perez, the second of the two Perez brothers on this card in bout number one here on our BKFC Knuckle Mania 3 preview. You saw Gene's younger brother, Derek Perez, winning a unanimous decision versus Anthony Sanchez. And again, on our main card tonight, you will see Eric Dodson's older brother, John Dodson, at 125 pounds in our feature fight of the evening versus Jared Grant. You're with us right now. This is bout number three, the final bout of our BKFC Knucklemania 3 preview. And again, at the top of the hour, our main card begins. The way to watch it, we are live, sold out tonight here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, is on the BKFC app. One must always trim their nails before <laughs> entering MMA or bare knuckle. And that's, that's just for the safety of the fighter. You will get a, a, a nail in the eye that could cause a lot of problems. 
usually they do this before, but hey, like you said, free manicure show, you know what I mean? Our cut man and one and only BKFC, Guillermo Perez. Not just the cut man, <laughs> doing a nice job of cutting the nails of Gene Perez. A big ovation for Albuquerque native Eric Dotson here in his home city. 1-0 in BKFC. As we showed you at the top of our free view, that Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship debut last August, he defeated Nick Villar by way of first round knockout. Prior to that, his BKFC and Pro Combat Sports debut, Dotson had seven AMI MMA bouts. In our fighter meeting, Eric Dotson said, I want to utilize constant movement from the outside, keep changing tempo, keep changing rhythm. So one thing I like, I haven't seen this guy not smiling since I got here. Always has a smile on his face. He's loving this. What he wants to do here, keep his opponent at range, just touch him. He doesn't care about making the KO happen. It's going to happen. He just has to touch his opponent as often as possible. Once again, Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the next fight of the night, scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the featherweight division, presented to you by Nerd Focus, the original think drink. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears blue and black. He stands five feet, five inches tall. His official weight, 142.4 pounds. He holds a combined combat sports record of 41 fights. And tonight makes his BKFC debut, fighting out of Belen, New Mexico. Here is Gene the And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black and yellow. He stands five feet, six inches tall. His official weight, 144.4 pounds. His BKFC record stands undefeated at 1-0. Fighting out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Here is the undefeated Eric Thuggy Bear Dodson. Referee in charge of the action, Kerry Hatley. John Dotson in the corner of his younger brother, Eric Dotson. Eric Dotson said, I'm going to keep fainting. I'm going to keep setting traps. Oh, here we go, ready? On the line, on the line. All right, here we go, ready? Buckle up. Kerry Hatley placing Gene Perez correctly on the scratch line. Round number one. Black trucks for Eric Dotson, blue trucks for Gene Perez. Perez is coming straight forward there and punches him. Good left hand, right hand. And it's the right presence oh, coming in, just throwing right great sorry. punches with his chin up. He's got to be careful doing that. Hey. It's the mandatory eight given to Perez from Kerry Hatley. Right, here we go. Ready? Got her in. Buckle up. In the center circle hands high and tight for Dotson. You see the movement on the fade overhand left. Big swings on the inside from Perez, then the straight right hand. Big right hand again from Eric Dotson. Another right hand knockdown number two. two. Three. You good? Perez is just rolling up to those punches. Five, one, looking to land six, that one knockout punch. So it opens him up when he misses, eight, or even when up. he just throws that punch, he's opened up for counters. All right, take stuff, man. Here we go. No ready? three knockdown go. rule in this BKFC rule set. Kerry Hatley taking an even closer look now. Phenomenal start from Eric Dotson in round number one. 55 seconds remaining in this opening round. On the uppercut, and that is knockdown number three. Rule to slip from Kerry Hatley. Right back to it. Smear of blood under Perez's right eye. There's a big right hand, another right hand. And there's just that counting right there. Perez threw a punch, missed. Counter right there by Dotson. Audacious rear right bolo punch from Eric Dotson. Dotson shuffling his feet, coming forward. There's the faint right to the body, left hand. One way traffic, and that clearly is knockdown number three. And that is game set match, Eric Dotson. Like you said, Sean, there's no three knockdown rule in effect right here, but. Yeah, Referee yeah. seen enough. This is a one-sided fight right there. He didn't see any way that was going to go different. He just saved Perez from, you know, Perez is a prideful guy. Didn't want to quit like that, but that's what the referee's job is to stop that fight in that situation. Perez brothers now one and one on the evening. The Dawson brothers right now one and zero. Download the BKFC. Outstanding from Eric Dawson. And what really impressed me right there was 
That's his ability to counter. Every time Perez was throwing punches, he was throwing these wild shots just like that right there. But look, right with a good right hand comeback, that's what led to that knockdown. And that's a difficult thing to do, be able to counter effectively and land on the mark. That's exactly what Eric Dotson did the entire fight. And I love that body shot right there. That was a shot people don't realize. When you land in the body, it freezes you. You can't move after that, and then the other shots come. Great combination right there, just hitting whatever the opponent is taking. Great job. Gene Perez was very game, very experienced. This was his 51st pro combat sports bout. He simply had no answers for the volume, the precision, and the hand speed of Eric Dotson. Here's Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Kerry Hatley, steps in and calls a stop to this fight at 1 minute 32 seconds into round number one. For your winner by KO, Eric Thuggy Bear Dodson. And Eric Dodson just keeps looking more and more impressive with that hand speed accuracy. I can't wait to see this guy fight again, Sean. He looks like he has it all. Eric Dodson said, I want to pump my jab to control the distance. He pumped his jab, exploded to the inside, and then flurry of punches. Three knockdowns to the finish line for Eric Dodson. The winner, by way of first round KO, Eric Dodson defeats Gene Perez. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Watch every live Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship pay-per-view event for $7.99 a month. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live Bare Knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, only $7.99 per month.
I will continue to exert my dominance over the BKFC. Down. I honestly mean it when I say it. I, I am the best pound for pound bare knuckle fighter in the world, period. When I touch him, he will see that I'm the champ for a reason. It's the biggest bare knuckle extravaganza of all time. Knuckle Mania 3, Juggernaut vs. Marine for BKFC Gold. Live from the sold out Tingley Coliseum in the land of enchantment, Albuquerque, New Mexico. And it starts right now. Turkey, New Mexico, a legendary city for fighting that's given us names like Tapia, Foster, Condit, Sanchez, and home. A hotbed for some of the best fighters in the world and the perfect setting for the biggest spectacular and bare knuckle fighting, Knuckle Mania number three. Buckle up because the main card is upon us. No shortage of action for the next five fights. Next up, Chevy Bridges throws hands with the bombastic Kevin Crew. Later, can MMA stand out and former NFL Pro Bowler Greg Hardy go viral again in fighting, this time without the gloves. And speed is king when John the Magician Dotson collides with Kid Gaddy, Jared Grant. Co-main event sees yet another world champion boxer toe the line with Las Cruces' Austin no doubt Trout, but he'll stand across the ring from an MMA levy legend in Diego, the Nightmare Sanchez. And in the main event, the time for talk is over as Lorenzo Hunt could be facing his most daunting challenger yet, the devastating sniper, Mike the Marine Richmond for the undisputed light heavyweight championship. And we are here inside of a jam-packed Tingley Coliseum here in the 505 Albuquerque, New Mexico, and my goodness, has it already been incredible, just like we expected. In fact, I'll put it to you this way, so you can understand a little bit better. BKFC, it's like that stuff that Jesse and Walt were cooking out in the RV in the desert. That's right, when you get a taste of BKFC, you gotta get some more. We're like the blue sky of combat sports. Yes, indeed, folks. We are so glad to have you here for Knuckle Mania 3. And if you want to think a little bit more interesting, it's very easy with DraftKings Sportsbook. Indeed, you can earn a $50 bonus bet on tonight's card with your first deposit of $5 or more on DraftKings Sportsbook. Scan the QR code, enter the code BKFC Mania to play right now. And we're going to head right back ringside to our commentary team. And gentlemen, it's crazy. It seems like this main event has been brewing for about six months. I don't think I've ever seen the venom like we have seen between Lorenzo Hunt and Mike Richmond. He broke bad about two years ago, and it's been crazy ever since. Cyrus, thank you very much. Our main event to unify the BKFC 185-pound title. It is the full champion Lorenzo Hunt versus the interim champion Mike Richmond. Both fighters came after a successful pro MMA career, respectively. Hunt has fought in MMA as heavy as 205. Richmond has fought as light as 135 in pro MMA. Such an interesting thing. That's not normal. But what you see right here, Lorenzo Hunt, the reason he's been such a dominant champ, He's really made this for his own, and he's really figured out. Look at these combinations. This guy figures out how to throw. You don't see many guys, especially this height, weight, everything, just coming in with the hard punches of the body that ends with the head. Phenomenal job. Like I said, this isn't boxing with no gloves. This is bare knuckle fighting. Lorenzo Hunt explains that and understands that very well. Throwing great combinations, great power. So confident right now. Feels like he is, without a doubt, the best fighter in the world. Any weight class, anything. Feels like he's our best person in the whole BKFC. Mike Richmond, however, been so calm, so cool, so collected when he fights. Pinpoint accuracy, precision, 
He just dominated everybody, but now we saw something different right here. In this fight against Isaac Doolittle, we found that not only is this guy a great hammer, he can also be a good nail. He can take a beating and come back. Such a difficult thing to do. That's what we figured out, and that can make him more of a complete fighter. We know he can't get hit, he can't get hurt, but he can come back. You can see what he did here to Doolittle. Doolittle had him all but out in the second round. Richmond came back. That was unbelievable to me, and that's what makes this such a great fight. We know he can get hurt by Hunt, and he can still come back and get that victory. Chris, your keys to victory for both main event fighters are presented by Nerd Focus. Great, John. Keys to victory right here where we have what Mike Richmond has to do. He's got to get in early and land a power shot to slow Hunt down. With that, he's got to get inside without taking damage. He cannot take two, three shots when he gets inside. And when he gets inside, he wants to throw them to the body. He thinks if he lands to Lorenzo Hunt, that can slow him down and make it much easier for him to get the knockout. Now, what Lorenzo Hunt needs to do, he needs to make sure every time Richmond tries to get inside, he has to make him pay for closing that gap. And when he does, he doesn't throw just one punch. It's got to be combinations. That's where he lands his clean shots and knocks people out. And when he does get in there, if he hurts Richmond, he's got to finish him. We saw in Richmond's last fight, he can't take a punch and come back. That's up to Lorenzo Hunt to finish him when he gets him hurt early. We'll open our main card with a bout in the lightweight division. Crescent Tools brings you the numbers for Chevy Bridges versus Kevin Kroom. And you can see we have a three-inch height advantage, three-inch reach advantage. Also, his fist size is a little bit bigger, but that's what Kevin Kroom wants to utilize. He can stay outside when he wants to close that gap as he needs, but he has to utilize all those physical attributes against a very tough Chevy Bridges. Kevin Kroom in his BKFC debut last November. He defeated Sean Wilson by second round knockout. And you can see here, Kroom did a great job of utilizing his length, staying outside, landing hard punches. But when